all officers, including the captain, are dead, lying in the chart room and bridge, possibly whole crew dead. Murders, mysteries, unexplained stories, and our family's crazy opinions on them all. Join us now. The Family School of Thought is in session. Hey, everybody. Welcome again to the weekly Family School of Thought. Hope everybody had a good week. Hope everybody did uh, had a nice Christmas and a nice New Year's. Um, Cassie, what's the weather like out there in Portland, Oregon? Pretty rainy. We're in our rainy season, so instead of snow, we get rain. 40 degrees. About that. Yeah, better than snow. I think so. Although, I enjoyed the little bit of snow we had. It was kind of nice. Maybe we'll get some more. It's um, really warm here now. How about you, uh, Jess? How's the weather there? Beautiful. Yeah. We spent the day outside playing in the snow, building snowmen and snow forts. There's snow left? Um, There was when we were out earlier today playing, but uh, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. All right. Well, you want to get us started with some uh, amazing facts? Yes, this is the last week for Mental Floss Amazing Facts. So what I are hope we going to do it. next week? I don't know yet. We'll have to figure it out. Wow. Santa didn't bring me a new calendar. so Yikes. Yeah, so we'll what figure a... it out. But I hope you guys have enjoyed these Mental Floss. So really here have. are the last three Mental Floss Amazing Facts from the calendar. Tw uh, 2022 calendar. <clears throat> so since this this uh, podcast um, recording will air after the new year, I'm just going to give the last little bit of new year trivia or tidbits on here. Instead of a ball drop, North Carolina, a North Carolina town of Eastover drops a three foot, 30 pound flea to ring in the new year. What? A flea? flea. A flea. <laughs> That's a huge yeah. flea. 30 pounds? 30 pounds. Three foot, 30 pounds. So. There must be some meaning behind that. Yeah, I don't know. But I also, you know, Michigan, Traverse City is the cherry capital of the world, I think. Um, they uh, they drop a cherry for the um, for the ball drop. Um, Matt and I have gone to that. It it's been years since we've gone, but it was amazing. I think it was 2017 when we, we went or when we rang in 2017 and it was absolutely amazing. They just do a whole block party outside right on uh, the lake basically. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So yeah. A was doing a big block party. Yes. Are we doing it again this year? Yes. Yeah. They've been doing it. Um, they started doing that and, um, Ring it in 2017, ring it in 2018. That was the first year we did go to that one. Yes. Uh, right. Yes. Back then. And the only reason I know exactly what year that was is because I was pregnant at that time <laughs> and nobody knew. Um, well, we knew, but nobody else knew. <laughs> so. Did Matt know? Yes. That's yeah. who he is. <laughs> <laughs> that is the we. <laughs> Um, so my next fact is, um, before he started writing about amazing adventures with our favorite superheroes, Stan Lee, who is the creator of Marvel Comics, if anybody doesn't know who he is, he wrote in, um, he wrote obituaries for celebrities. Oh. And so it was a really good uh, paying job he eventually quit that job because it was too depressing and he hated writing about people in the past tense so then right. he began writing the marvel comics and yeah, i think he did cool. pretty well for himself yeah i bet i there's mean... another celebrity an actress i don't remember who it is but that did that wrote obituaries might have been like rosie o'donnell or somebody like that hmm. you know before they yeah. made it, that's what they did. Yeah, huh? I wrote obituaries that's for funny. a small period of time. Oh, maybe it was you. <laughs> well, I'm not a celebrity. So. 
And I didn't write celebrity no. obituaries. No. No. Okay. So right. my last amazing fact okay. is Beaver College changed its name to Ar Arcadia University in 2001 in part because anti-porn uh, filters blocked access to the school's website. <laughs> Beaver. It was probably beaver.com. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the beaver.com. Well. Yeah, and you got to think, so this was in 2001 that they changed their name to Arcadia University. Again, this amazing facts calendar has been fun, but it doesn't give any more descriptions than what is there. But I'm assuming 2001 was when the internet was really, really starting to take off. And... So, you know, they probably didn't think about it too much. And yeah, now you have the anti-porn filters that are on a, you know, the typical public schools and universities uh, websites and can't access your own website. So makes wow. it fun. Huh. Well, that is go. fascinating. Those are the mental floss amazing facts from 2022. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Okay. I did. Cass, what do you got for us this week? All right. I've got another. Oh, actually, this one, I didn't realize this uh, song was written in 1988. I always considered it a 90s hit as well. Um, but it is There She Goes by The Laws. Um, and I... I always, for some reason, I always thought it was like in a bunch of like '90s movies, but I couldn't find. Yeah, it is. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it in any movie. It didn't it? Wasn't like in it's the soundtrack or something. Oh, that's what I thought too, but it, it's not on there. Um, but so, the song. Uh, I'll just read you the second verse, and maybe you guys can figure out why it's creepy. Um, it's there she blows, there she blows again, pulsing through my veins. I just can't contain this feeling that remains. Huh. This wow. song that is for me, I always thought it was like this quintessential, like, you know, the like, girl is coming in and like, she's by. just got her makeup done and like, she's beautiful. Yeah. And there she goes. It's yeah. about heroin. Yeah. The whole song <laughs> is about heroin oh, okay. about <laughs> and heroin. doing drugs. Wow. Hmm. But yeah, Christ. so that's really Again, it's another one of those songs that, like, if you read the lyrics, it's very clear. It's they blow your mind. It's, it's right. It's 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 right there, um, but it's it's you know nobody really thinks about it. But wow. there she goes. Is about. I could have doing good. It was in she's all that. <clears throat> that I the only movie I could find it in was in Snow Day, which I did watch when yeah. I was a kid. But I swear it was like in a bunch of nineties, you know, rock. I was looking it up too. I definitely thought it was an early nineties song though, not an eighties. Yeah. Eight nineteen eighty eight. Wow. Yeah, I didn't ever guess that song was about heroin. No. I swear they put it over like every like slow motion girl coming in and the guy finally falls in love with her. Yeah. It must have been <laughs> on a lot of like TV shows or whatever Maybe, that we I don't know. These are all find like it. subliminal messages. Yeah. Well, yeah. love is a little bit like a drug. So. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. All there right. You go. That's a good, that's a good oh, one. it was it was in Parent Trap. Was it okay? Yeah. Fever Pitch. Girl. Interru girl interrupted. Yeah. That's where I. Okay. Was. I don't know where you're finding these, but I'm glad you found them because I could have sworn I like I knew that it was there. Okay, so this is, and it was in the past. I was just thinking, I just started rewatching Gilmore Girls, and I'm like, I just heard this song. Yeah, it was in yes. the pilot episode of Gilmore Girls. That's okay. Where I it that was is. like the first scene. It's literally the yeah. first scene. Yeah, now that you say that. Yes, that is. Yes. There she goes. <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> okay, D, you're up this week. You got a fascinating story for us? Well, I hope it is. It's, um, it's about. The Orang Medan. Do you, does anybody know what that is? It's the man that of Medan ghost ship. Oh. It was, it's the US, It's the SS Orang Medan. Yes. And it was the it was otherwise known as Man of Medan Ghost Ship. And it happened in February. Well, there's so many different dates, nobody really knows, but um 
it was in 1947, 90, 1948, but it says February of 1947. And it was a freighter ship for the U.S. Army. And um, where it was going or coming from, there's no record of the ship ever having been found. Um, but it was in the... Um, Melanian River, or I gotta oh, get shit. it back. No, it was in the river. I mean, oh, it wasn't uh, a river, though. It was like a gulf, or yeah. Um, so it was in there, and um, all of a sudden, um, the it, uh, the SOS came across the British outpost. And the nearby ships, there was two nearby ships, and one was the British Britain something, and then the other one was the Silver Star. Well, the Silver Star was two hours away from the SOS call, so he uh, turned course and and um, decided that he was going to go uh, answer this SOS call. And so... Um, they got the dis distress, and on the distress, it said um, the all officers, including the captain, are dead, lying in the chart room and bridge, possibly whole crew dead. This message was followed by um, undecipherable um, dots, lines, and then another message oh. came through clear as day <laughs> um i die and that's it that's all that was said and then nobody could get in contact no they never heard nothing else when the star the silver starship um freighter arrived um it seen the ship in the distance so it came up stayed kind of stayed back because they didn't know what was going on the, what kind of distress it was under um, they tried to flag when they seen it. There was no flag on the ship. Apparently, when a, a boat's in distress, it should put a flag up. Is that true? I don't know. But it's it kept talking about no flag. It just kept saying there was no flag. So I don't understand what that meant. But um, it, um, it took over two hours for the uh, Silver Star to get there. And when they did, they approached gently trying to get um, attention from all crew on the organ or orang medan and they couldn't get anybody to answer they couldn't get anybody to come to the um sides of the boat nothing so they sent a crew um in a uh, lifeboat over to get on this boat and um when they got there there was um no life appeared and they climbed up aboard they couldn't figure out what was going on there was no um damage to the boat nothing but they got over the sides of the boat and the whole crew was frozen laying on the deck, star-eyed, bright-eyed, um, a mouth gapped open in fear or terror, and they were frozen. They'd been sitting in the sun for two hours, but their bodies were still frozen. And they were, you know, and even the dog was had fear and shock in their eyes. They were, you know, their mouths were gapped. So they were like, ah, you know, and it showed pictures of them and they couldn't figure out what was going on. And so then they went down into the steam room. And when, when they were going down into the steam room, they experienced a very bad chill. But the, the room was 110 Fahrenheit, but it was freezing. That's crazy. So 
they still couldn't figure out. And all of the steam people were in the same state. The guy that had typed up the SOS, he was still sitting in his seat, starstruck, mouth agapped, eyes in terror. And, and then the dog was the same way. The dog was froze with terror in his eyes and just standing there, uh, bar, gr snarling that it seen something, but nothing, nothing on the boat. Um, there was nothing to figure out what had gone wrong. What had caused this? Is it, um, was it a UFO? Was it um, a pirate? Um, um, a pirate they never figure out what it was. No, they could never figure out what 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 it was or what happened. And so um, they. Um, They uh, went to tie up the boat, and um, as they were tying, they you know they couldn't figure out what had happened because there was, you know, like I said, there was no form of struggle, there was no form of um, damage to the boat, there was no form of um, damage. Or, I mean, there was no struggle with with any of the crew they were just frozen on the deck so um they went to tie up the lines and thought that they were going to um tow it back to port and as they tied up the boat all of a sudden smoke come bellowing out of the um the the hull so the crew immediately took off and got off the boat and got into their lifeboat and got back on their boat. And as they um, just at the nick of time, they cut the lines of the boat and the boat completely come out of the water, blew up and sunk to the bottom of the ocean. And nobody knows what happened. But come to find out there was um t the um I've got notes everywhere and now I'm and now I've lost where I'm at there um there was no sign of foul play all the bodies um were like I said frozen but there was no injuries and the crew had already decided to uh decide ciphered the that the bodies were decomposing faster than what they should have been decomposing mm, and uh, frozen? especially if they are frozen right 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 and so they said that the bodies had started to decompose already so you know what they, do you think they, that they had right. been dead for well they they called the distress and it took the, the star, Silver Star two hours to get there. So it had only been two hours out in the sun on the ocean. And um, when they when they called in for their distress call, um, when they got, when the ship arrived, they were 50, I don't know what, nautical, they were 50 nauticals away from what the, the boat had drifted, 50 you know, whatever. Oh, they, were, they were drifted farther than they were supposed to be. Right. They had drifted 50 spot, 50 more wherever from where they had said that their location was. Okay. And um, the, the biggest mystery is that there is very, ex the, the mystery is very existence of the ship because there is no records that even proved that the ship ever existed. Wow. And so the the crew of the um, Silver Star were very tight-lipped about the incident. And on the rescue party, the, 
the they had party said that they heard when they when they were up on the boat only you know there's just hits and misses of different stories so you know you can't believe you don't know what to believe because there were so many different theories and stories of what had happened and some were saying that the rescue party from the silver star um heard unhuman laughter and that there was fear and it was that it was fearsome and that they were there that they heard whispering and then they also said that there was um lights on the boat that were undistinguishable so they didn't know where these lights and was it eerie so was it really um a ghost ship and a pirate you know pirates that come on, you know, I mean, ghost pirates that had come onto this boat out into the middle of the ocean. Um, it's just, un, it's still unheard. But um, one of the, um, one of the crew uh, was hired um, and See, this is another this this is another sketchy thing. They were they hired all of their crew, but they never asked any questions on who was going to run this crew. You know, they you know when when they hired you, they didn't ask any information. And this guy, this his name was um, uh, Rabbit. Uh, Mm, hold on, I gotta go back up. Got his first name. His last name was Rabbit. Um, well, I don't think that was that oh. uncommon back in the '40s for them to just go get a group of men. They didn't ask questions. Right, so a lot of them right. were escaping the right. authorities Especially or whatever. Like they just got whoever they could to work on the boat. Right. So this Jerry Rabbit was um, the only survivor, and he um he told the captain that um he had found or, or that people were complaining of being sick and um and um Uh, hold on. I gotta find I gotta find my front page. Um he was complaining that um some of the crew members were complaining about being sick and um the captain kind of shrugged him off and so um he didn't believe anything that the um you know he kind of thought, well, this isn't this isn't right. Um that um it shouldn't be like this. So he went and found out that um he went into the captain's crew and stole the um the log. And took off in a lifeboat. And then 10 days after he took off, um, it was it washed up onto Mar on a Marshall Island. And he uh, with him being out in the open seas and the treacherous waters, um, he was the only survivor. And he claimed to be the second officer. And then he claimed that he was telling a um Italian missionary that um he was from the SS Orang Medan and that he that they took 15,000 crates of unknown cargo at various Chinese ports before taking course to Costa Rica um he, and then he had said that he had no doubts left that this was a smuggling operation and then soon after Rabbit heard um, Stokes and machine staff complain of the stuff. Um, he told the captain 
about that. And then uh, he got on the boat and took off. When he come across the missionary, they, you know, he said that there was um, that the that one of the crews, the captain said that one of the crews, the the crew member that got sick and died, that the captain ruled it as a heart attack, and Rabbit considered that was highly unlikely because they snuck on the ship. Um, one of the things that was listed in the logbook was sulfuric acid, cyanide, and nitroglycerin, which was likely the cause of the crew's death. And um, probably the explosion as well. Those are all like highly flammable. Right. And there's some, you know, the, that that's what happened was the ocean water somehow got on this and made the sulfuric acids and the, and the fumes and, the acid, and it, and it killed them all. But what explains the terror on their face or with these, these types of gases, would it make you gasp for air or, you know, right. I, mean, I don't right. know, you know, some of you, some of these are just theories, you know, you, you know, and um, like carbon monoxide poisoning. Right. Well, it, that one, I, it would like be like, a very slow, like, right. You got, you usually like go to sleep basically. You right. know, you right. blink, you s slip into like unconsciousness. You're not terrified. Right. And, well, and I can see them all like, trying to gasp for air. So they're, you know, trying to, right. Yeah. Well, definitely well, like, I, if they hit them all at one time, cyanide. Like, yeah. If this all went off at one time. Right. It kind of makes sense that they would all be in that state. Yeah. So Rabbit explained this to this missionary that had found him drifted up on the um on the Marshall Island. And um apparently uh a few days after he um got there, it, it, he passed away. He of it says of ex exhaustion. And then some have called it a conspiracy. Other call it an urban legend. Um, they're, they, they're saying that there was no records of um, on the Silver Star in the logbooks that they even harbored or um, that they had went to the SOS to rescue the out, um, orang, uh, the orang um, madan. But... In some of the other paperwork, it also says that it was from Sumatra. So if it wasn't a Dutch boat or it wasn't hauled from the Dutch ports and it was made in another, a totally different area, you know, could that be possible? I, you know, you just don't know. It was never registered in any of the Dutch things, but in when this supposedly had happened, um, they said that it was recorded in the paper that there was paper articles and they had written they had, they had wrote about this ship blowing up and having SOS and the and the a crew being frozen out up on the deck. And so you know another theory is is um, why wasn't um, the missionary, the Italian missionary, uh, the, why wasn't he, the investigation um, followed up on Rabbit um, or the six men that died? I mean, why, why, you know, and the people that were on board, why weren't any of their families, I mean, how come nobody knew that their relatives were not come back off the ocean or maybe they just expected the, you know, back in those days, if you went out into the ocean, you never knew if you were going to come back or not. So well, like I said, most of them probably, they didn't even know, have any records of them when they got them on the ship. Cause a lot of them were escaping the law or, you know, or just trying well, to get away. So they, well, probably, this, they were like, this also was at the time of the wars. 
Right. And well, over. If forty yeah, seven forty eight, the war is over. Right. But, but a lot then, of times, the world's misfit people, you know, they nobody was looking for them because they had already checked out on their families and stuff like that. Well, and especially if this was a smuggling boat. If this was a smuggling boat, they're not going to have any record of it. They're not going to have any record of who was on the boat. Right. Um, and, and then that that's in my notes here. But, um, you know, and then another thing is, is whatever happened to the logbook? If this... Jerry Rabbit said that there was a logbook that he stole that logbook off of that boat. Then why doesn't the missionary have that boat? Where where did the missionary put this? Um, you, know, you know the logbook. It should be all of the evidence with the material. You know of the distress call. You know, but you know. the ship was sunk and never seen again. No, and and so and nobody went at, to look for it, you know, which I don't understand that neither. Um, and then um, another thing is is uh, that with all of the um, with the nitrogen, uh, uh, nit nitroglycerin and the cyanide and the sulfuric acid, they it was also said that um, in potassium that a Japanese um, bacteriologist, his name was Sarah, I'm slashing his name, it's Saro Ishii. Um, he was part of the Unit 731, um, and he performed in um, insidious experiences on the American, British, and Australian war prisoners. And that were more sinister than um, any of the Nazi experiences. This is what was said. Oh, wow. that, so this Not ship good. that you right. That's so this bad. ship that was hauling all of this stuff, um, you know, it was well known maybe. And it, nobody wanted it to be known because it also said in my notes that... Um, that um, the U.S. government didn't want it out because of the mere fact that it would, um, or, or this Baton um, concluded that the chemicals possibly um, were the explanation of, of their demise and also stated that the U.S. government may have wanted to erase all records because it could have embarrassed the government involved, all the governments that were involved, especially in the light of Geneva Convention. Oh. So I don't know if that, you know, if that's why, but um, everybody keeps saying, is it real? Is it, or was it fictionary? Um, we, we just may never know. The story exists because... Um, like the gases, it escaped. So, you know, I mean, do do they really do they really believe that there was really a boat? Could it be that the Japanese were um, transporting these um, gases and smuggling all these gases to different countries and um, to use them in some sort of a war? They also said that they wanted to um, that. In, in some of these stories that it was um, sounded like the uh, the USS Eldridge that in the secret experiment experiment of the naval ship um, that they wanted to make it they they were trying these with those kind of chemicals they were trying to um, make it a vessel completely invisible to radar and um, they were doing this in Philadelphia shipyard and with a blue green glow surrounding the hall, the Eldridge vanished. So, and it was also said that that ship was also have been seen in the Norfolk Naval Yard ship, Virginia before disappearing and reappearing in Philadelphia. And the legend states that the classified military documents reported that Eldridge crew 
were affected by this event in many disturbing ways. Some went insane and others developed mysterious illnesses. And it was also said that the same um, thing with uh, um, Madain that those were the same things that ha happened on the Eldridge. So is it that they just renamed it or, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it could have been an experiment because about that time the governments were exper experimenting with, um, um, you know, I, there's another story about another ship where they tried to um, make it invisible. Right, and right. Two guys, they, that, two was guys actually, that was two guys the actually US off the US boat. SS Eldridge. Right. Mm -hmm. Two guys jumped off of the boat as it, you know, before it became invisible. And um, the rest of the crew it has never been seen again, the boat or it. And so they survived. And of course, they ended up, you know, being crazy because they're trying to explain this story. Mm -hmm. Actually, and actually, when you started this, there's a pretty recent story right now where a ship from. I don't know when, you know, if it was 40s or 50s, all of a sudden it just appeared. You know, they found it. It came up missing all those years ago, and it's just been floating for all these years out in the yeah. sea. And they, it, so, they, so it came visible. They found it, and it still had the crew on it. You know, they were dead, but their crew was like, you know, skeletal remains. But they're like sitting in their positions and, you know, they're not gathered around or trying to escape or anything. So it, was, yeah. it wasn't like sunk. It was like above no. water. No, it just come, you know, just appeared. Out yeah, but like, open. so crazy. So, so yeah, it, so, it, it literally had been floating there for 40, 50 years. And so that's what I'm saying. You know, it, it, all these people are coming up with the, all these theories and they're writing new things in 1950s. And, you know, so... Is this really, or are they just, um, this is kind of, um, it conspiracy. reminds me of the Netflix show. I was Even just thinking that. <laughs> I was just about to bring that up. That I wonder. The end. Yeah. I, I wonder. The Netflix show what? 1899. It just came oh, out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. literally the, is the, like, you know. The first like, episode is like almost exactly the same story. Exactly like the story right. And, and there's, they, they said that they're, you know, getting movies out and, and so on. it probably is. And um, pirates. No, this is like a sci fi. This is like a. They don't believe it. It's it's not a story. I'd be up for that scene after that. But yeah, that's what, yeah, that. that's what I, because like it really is. I mean, no spoiler alerts too much, but I mean, it basically is that same thing where. Yeah. This, there's it gives the stress that goes out. They can't figure out what the message is. It's kind of gibberish, Morse code. Right. They end up right. find the captain decides, hey, I'm gonna go off course and find the ship. They find it, and everybody's like, "Don't go on it," because nobody's responding, you know. And um, they they end up going onto the ship, and and uh, they find one survivor, and everybody else right. is gone. This the ship doesn't explode or anything like that, you know. So it does like, disappear it, though. Okay, it does, if you watch it, if you watch it too long enough, it does disappear once yeah, they start right. pulling it. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Is, I, when mom was saying this, this I was like, this sounds exactly thing. like, yeah, yeah. No, this sounds exactly like people, mom's story. I think people are getting the story and then they're starting to put all this stuff together. And, and Based. like I said, you know, it depending on what part you, what section you were reading, because it all has similar stuff, but then some of it branches off and, you know, you, you know, like the, you know, I, I don't know. Some say that they were very tight lipped, that nobody knows anything about it. Then other, you know, then some were saying that um, they said that they heard the laughter and, you know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I definitely think if I was on a ship where a bunch of people are dead, even if I heard a human laughter, I'd be freaked out. A little scared. Yes. <laughs> That'd be just, really creepy. <laughs> just to, yeah, just a pet, just a tad, but um, you know, it's, it, it uh, it's it's a it's still a mysterious uh, existence. I mean, the biggest mystery is the existence of the ship, or 
does it not exist? Does it exist? Does it does it not exist? Is is this just a big urban legend um, that people tell stories about, or did it really really happen? Did this uh, missionary guy um, keep secrets, or did somebody come to him um, and say, "Don't release any information"? Was it you know was it our government that was trying to protect it? Um, something going on. Um, was it really, was it visited by aliens? Was it, you know, was it a UFO that come down onto the ship? And because they were saying that half the, the crew wasn't there, that it should have been, you know, that there should have been 40 crew men and there really wasn't that many men on there when they got there. So what happened to the other, other than the six guys, you know, that left on the lifeboat, what happened to the other people, um, you know. I wonder if- When it exploded, um, did they ever find any parts at the bottom of the ocean? Everybody, you know, everybody's into going and finding the Titanic. Why isn't anybody going to this destination and trying to find parts of this boat? Have any of these parts floated up, you know, the one boat drifted to Marshall Island. Ooh, there's got to be many, many other islands. Did anything, did corpses, you know, I mean, what happened to all the corpses? You know, they, well, all the, the crew, their, their bodies would have drifted up to the, to shore somewhere. Or maybe with the explosion, they exploded. They probably sank, yeah. I don't know. There's, there's bodies still on the Titanic currently, so like obviously. Right. Um, I I do think that maybe, I mean, with all urban legends, there's there's a you know a core of truth. There's something that created the story. There's something that has to create right. the story. And so, and it's in the papers. I mean, they I, they they have proof in the papers about stuff. You know, they wrote about right. a boat and frozen bodies. So somewhere it happened or, you know, it did, you know. Right. I wonder if it was just, I, I mean, I don't know about the Orang Moran, Medan being a real ship in itself. But, like, I, I'm sure that the Silver Star just came across a distress signal, went to the ship. And then, I mean, obviously, like, this is... a you know, you're going to a distress signal that says all crew members are dead, I die. Um, you're going to be pretty terrified. So it's probably just, you know, they exaggerated what they saw on the ship. Like they just saw a bunch of dead bodies and whether they were frozen in terror or not, like that's probably pretty terrifying to come across in general. So you're, you, you know, you're going to have a bunch of spooked men telling a story about how they found a bunch of dead bodies right. on an abandoned ship. Well, and then in also every reading that I read, they said that they tied that boat up to the starship to be hauled back to port. But as soon as they tied that boat up, it started smoking. And then as soon as they cut that ties, that boat exploded. So, yeah, I, mean, I mean, why didn't it, why didn't it explode when the guys were on there? Why didn't the smoke come up when the people were on the boat? I mean, they, I mean, I would assume that they would have seen smoke coming before, you know, could have it been that aliens had an invisible tunnel around that boat? I don't know. I mean, there's just all kinds of theories that anybody could have. Yeah. I, I think that they went to, they hit a portal, went to through a wormhole, went to a different <laughs> universe where they were frozen and fear because they saw all these aliens and then they went back in through that wormhole back to our universe. Right. Yeah. Could have been. Could be. I mean, anything's, anything's that would be why happen. like the time. And then, like, and then that's why nobody can find the ship. Right. right. Could exactly. be. Nobody can find the ship. Hmm. So I don't know. I mean, it's, I thought it was very interesting. I thought it was what happened. What happened to that crew of people? And does did the boat ever exist? Right. 
or is the was or was it true that like all all things the U.S. government was hiding something and it wasn't to be told? Right. Or I mean, like you guys said, like this is you know right after the Second World War, everybody, every country is trying to basically prepare for this. If it uh, another war were to break out, to be ready to have the best military, the best warships. So they probably were experimenting on these ships. Right. And they were something went wrong. From after, from, they were doing it during the war. Just because the war got over didn't mean they stopped experimenting on these. Well, right. I think it was just one of those things where, I mean, you see it in a lot of countries that, you know, it, the war ended and it was like, all right, well, to make sure that we nothing like this happens again, we want to make sure we have the best of the best and we're intimidating, basically. Yeah. It's basically the space race, but after the world right. war. Interesting. Yeah. Can really you guys funny. hear everything in the background of my? I can hear some voices, but okay. I thought it was demons <laughs> from the story. <laughs> it's the crew members. Yeah, the screaming. <laughs> Odin's, <laughs> crying. <laughs> Odin's crying. No, he's, he's laughing. He's laughing. Well, that's all. That's all I got for you. So, that's a good one. Good yeah, story. That's a good one. It is a mystery. Mm -hmm. I do think some of it too well, is just you know, given the time, you know, we didn't have communication. You know, like Morse code and telegraphs were like the basic method of communication. Mm -hmm. So especially and, for like ships for for ships and stuff. So. Right, right. But the more Morse code that what I don't understand is um, that they could not read the Morse code. So well, I'm sure, was like I was if the guy was like. Dying. Of dying, you know, and he was just trying Delirious. to, like, yeah, right. And then he wrote out instead of, I, you know, like, we're all dead or whatever, you know, like, I die. Like, he he was dying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, I don't know. It's He probably was starting a sentence and then realized he wasn't going to make it to the end and just put, I die. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It is an interesting, interesting thing. Yeah. But also, how did he survive longer than anybody else is a good question, too, to write right. the message. Well, and, and could have he been because he was in an enclosed area? Because they said that he was in his, like, you know, compartment where he right. does a Morse code. So he probably... It would have happened, happened, like, so quickly. Like, mm. it would have, like, all the deaths would have had to happen, like... Almost it's instantaneously. Yeah. 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 Right. Matt was Matt popped in and said they could, should have sent a message through a courier pigeon. Right. Right. A a pigeon? Bird would have made it past the gases <laughs> that probably killed them all. <laughs> and he hasn't been listening the whole thing, so I think he just heard us talking <laughs> it, about Morse code. It was a good guess, Matt. It was a good a guess. Good guess. <laughs> so, but um. And it also said that when they went back to check on it, that um, none of the harbors admitted having the SS Orang Madan um, in any of the ports or in the shipyards. That the and um, they had no no shipyard um, records had records of building it, building her. That's what they I, called it, building her. So I, yeah, um, they called it hers. It's a nautical thing. I don't know. Right. All ships are her. And that's what I'm saying, that maybe because um, it was in Sumatra, um, that it's in a different country? I And it was out I, of a different port? I what? think it was either an experiment that they didn't want any records of, or right. it was a smuggling ship, which they're not going to have records of anyway. Whether, right. no matter who built it or where it was built, they're not going to have any records if it was the whole purpose of it was to be and if it really was the, and if an it really was part of the U unit of 730 um 731 um from the japanese you know they they probably were trying to do things to the other countries coming Possibly. to the united states you know you just don't know so. and um it said that uh, 
it was um, stopped at different China Chinese. I need to, when I write my notes, I need to write it so that it's, I need to go back through and have it all in one spot. I'm not very good with that. But. Okay, you guys. Do like you have any questions for D? No, that was a good story. Our time is kind of closing. Oh, so, yeah. So we need all to wrap right. it up. But, um, Good story, D. All right, thanks. All right, All right maybe, guys. We'll, maybe we'll find an answer to it someday. Maybe, right. maybe. Uh, well, you know, what we need to do is another recap show because a lot of the stories we've done, you know, I've heard a lot since then. And to yeah. add to the stories, we should do a recap. Maybe yeah. that can be your new uh, fun facts is recap corner or a recap Ooh. beginning. That's where you find where you answers. That's, a, that's your job, Jess. That's a lot of homework. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's not just tearing a piece of paper Maybe off. Maybe you ought to just get a new <laughs> box of fun facts. Yeah. yeah. I already did. I ordered them already. <laughs> <laughs> I, you I, I was thinking. So at the beginning of the show, you didn't know. Well, well, during the show, I did. During the show, you ordered it. <laughs> I said, I'm thinking about it now. I better do it before. Before oh, next week, and I think, oh yeah. crap, I don't have anything. Yeah, I've done that. Been talking to people, and um, I literally ordered the book while I'm still talking yeah. to them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. All, All right. Well, it was great. Nice seeing everybody. Um, hope everybody has a safe week. Um, have a safe New Year's, although it's already past New Year's, but. If it wasn't, it'd be drive safe and be smart over the holiday weekend, okay? Yes. All right. Okay, Continue bye, guys. To be smart. Bye. 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 Alexa played the family school of thought.